to step down and for him to bring about the political reforms that Egyptians uh, so desperately need. And that is a president we hope to hear from soon. The word is that Hosni Mubarak will Guys, speak. Oh, you right, Eamon? Uh, yeah, come on, listen, we're going to, listen, we're, we're hearing outside the sound of, and again, I, I cannot see it because of the clouds, the cloud of black smoke has just completely kind of obstructed our view, but we can hear just from where we are the sounds of at least uh, very heavy armored vehicles. Uh, you can hear gunfire there. We're not sure whether it's live ammunition or, or whether there are some kind of rubber-coated bullets, but we can hear from where we are standing ammunition is being fired. There are massive explosions that, that you just very, heard. Again, yeah, we're not sure. Like a very loud explosion. Indeed, indeed it is. I'm not sure. How, how, clo how close does that feel to you, Eamon? Does it, uh, it, just to give us an idea of the picture we're looking at, where does it feel like it's coming from? Well, l listen, l let, me just give you, let me just give you a perspective of where we are. We're just a few hundred meters away from the Ministry uh, of Information and, very importantly, the radio and television building. Adjacent to that is Egypt's foreign ministry just down the block from where we are. Uh, we understand that, obviously, the Ministry of Interior on the other side of where we're standing, those are very critical government buildings. Uh, they're always heavily guarded, heavily uh, secured, not only by private security, but also by various uh, security branches within the government, including police and others. What we cannot confirm right now, where that direction of the explosions are coming from. We are hearing these massive loud explosions every once in a while. Uh, a short while ago, it seemed that we could hear helicopters hovering above overhead. There you can hear other gunshots. And amidst all of that backdrop, what you are hearing are the loud chants of the protesters. It has not died down at any point for the past several hours. The fires across Cairo are still uh, burning brightly there. You can see on the bridge that armored personnel uh, truck that was carrying uh, soldiers completely almost now melted. The uh, NDP headquarters just off to the left of where we're looking out also set on fire a short while ago. The cloud of black smoke there you can hear another massive explosion and it seems that there's been another fire that's been set underneath uh, the bridge. So indeed, a very, very, very chaotic scene here in the heart of Cairo. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, we say chaotic, we've been saying unprecedented and historic. I would throw another word in there and say frightening. It's actually sounding quite frightening there. I know the people are going out there to protest and make their voice heard, but it is, especially as night falls, turning into quite a frightening situation. Well, I guess the question, you're absolutely right. There's no doubt that fear is a factor on the minds of these people, but there's no doubt at the same time, the fact that they have overcome this fear, the fact that they are now on the streets amidst this gunfire, amidst this gunfire, amidst these explosions that constantly are just getting louder and closer to where we are, the fact that you can hear this and that the people are still here uh, is really a testament to the kind of determination these protesters have. So if there is any fear among the people, it's certainly not among the protesters who have defied the curfew, who have looked down police forces, who have looked down water cannons, uh, and who are now perhaps going to confront an even harsher crackdown in the coming hours if indeed the military does take to the streets. What you can expect, though, uh, in the coming days is going to be uh, a sense uh, of fear across the country, not because uh, of any particular change in the government, but what all this means for the ordinary citizens of Egypt, whether or not the president heeds the calls of the ordinary Egyptians, or whether or not in some way they manage to bring the situation under control and tighten the grip of the government and the police. That I think is going to be the concern and fear on everyone's mind in the coming days if, this, if indeed the situation is brought under control. And for the time being, it does not look like it with the sounds of these explosions that we are hearing, the gunfire and the protesters still on the street past the curfew. Eamon, thank you for now. I want to go to the phone and speak to Amin Iskander, who is the founder of both the Karama and Kafaya opposition parties in Egypt. And I'm not entirely sure if we're going to be speaking in English or through translation. Mr. Iskander, can you hear me okay? Right, excellent. We, we can go ahead with this. Mr. Iskander, thank you for your time. We are seeing pictures of the ruling party building on fire. What's your reaction to that? This is a clear indication uh, of the uh, popularity of the NTP 
uh, this uh, party has manipulated the seats of both the houses of the parliament, and it has also manipulated all the seats in the provincial elections. It prevented the, prevent, uh, the uh, Egyptian people from having a fair and just democratic representation. It uh, wreaked havoc and corruption in the country, preventing all the people from taking part in the political and social activities within Egypt. It had an iron and firm grip uh, imposing a state of uh, emergency over 30 years. They have gobbled up the riches and wealth of the country. That's why the headquarters is now being set on fire together with all other headquarters well, uh, throughout the country. We are expecting President Mubarak to speak live to the nation and to the world. What do you expect him to say? To me, I believe, unless President Mubarak offers a firm promise that this is the last term he spends in office, and unless he forms a committee to draft a new constitution and to pave the way for true democracy and to step down, and needless to say, he might face trial for the corruption wreaked in the country. But do you honestly expect him to do that? That's what you want him to do, what do you expect him to do? I don't think he's going to step down, simply for the reason that the, he has been in the seat of power for 30 years, uh, ruling the country by the military and emergency law. They have, the regime has a thick skin. It has turned the people of Egypt into a fossil, if not rotten fossil. This is a protest. All these yes. protests have been led yes. by the people. It's not been led by any political group. You are the opposition group. What would you plan to do now? That's true. Demonstrations are led by the masses of people. Now the opposition are joining forces with the people. Some credible heavyweight political opposition figures who had paid a dear cost over the uh, year of the NDP rule, they have now joined forces with the people, although the NDP is not national or democratic.